السلام عليكم May the peace and the blessing of Allah be with you With you today is Amani Shalabi Welcome to my podcast Hidden Jewels of the Quran Reflections on the Holy Book based on our common inner experiences Integrating spirituality with psychology, science, philosophy and ethics In this episode, we will reflect on how could Prophet Yunus have survived within the whale's stomach? Allah's creation is a holy book we are asked to read. When Allah says to us in the Holy Quran, read, He is instructing us not only to read the holy book, the Quran, but to also read the book of nature and to read our own selves so that we can gain holistic knowledge using the guidance of the Quran. So when we contemplate the fascinating story of Prophet Yunus or Jonah in English, alayhi salam, may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. From a scientific perspective, our attention should automatically turn to study the whale's anatomy to see how Prophet Jonah or Yunus could have survived within its stomach. Nature is a book we are invited to read and in doing so, we can progress in our understanding of life and its mysteries, including the mysteries in our religious scriptures. This passion for knowledge, or urge to know, has been encouraged in the Quran as Allah always asks us to contemplate, to reflect, to think, to examine, to study, and to understand. Let us now explore the types of whales living in our earth so that we may find the specific type of whale that could have swallowed Prophet Yunus There are many types of whales which scientists categorize into two main types toothed whales and baleen whales Toothed whales are predators that use their teeth to catch squid, fish, and other marine mammals. Whereas baleen whales have long strips of baleen in place of teeth. Baleen whales catch huge amounts of tiny krill, plankton, or other small organisms for nourishment. When hungry, the baleen whale swims with its mouth wide open and swallow large amount of food and the food passes to the whale's multi-chambered stomach. Baleen whales are much larger than the toothed whales. The size of the blue whale, which is a baleen whale, ranges from 100 feet, that is 30.5 meter, to 70 or 90 feet, which is 23 to 27 meter, and could certainly accommodate a human being. This could lead us to focus our research 
on the baleen whale as a possible whale that could have swallowed Prophet Yunus السلام, without cutting him into pieces. The baleen is a series of stiff but flexible material that hangs from the whale's upper jaw. The inside of the baleen is edged with hairy plates. Baleen is made of keratin, as our fingernails and hair. The ends of a whale's baleen are always wearing out. Baleen is also called whale bone. The baleen plates have no sharp harming edges, but they have soft hairy fiber and are more like plastic. The baleen whale's catch does not pass through a damaging process of biting or chewing and therefore a swollen human being could pass safely to the multi-chambered stomach. The largest whale is the blue whale and it is the largest animal that ever lived on our earth. Most likely, the blue whale is the one that could have swallowed Prophet Yunus السلام. Blue whales have been found in every ocean of the world, making it possible for them to have lived in the Middle East area where the story of Prophet Yunus والسلام, took place. Blue whales must eat two to four tons of krill and plankton a day during its feeding season. Blue whales are also called sulfur bottom whales by sailors because the whale's bodies become covered with large amount of algae which is greenish yellow in color like sulfur and that coloring could have allowed the whale to go unnoticed by Prophet Yunus والسلام, even if he could have seen the whale and tried to escape being captured by the whale he wouldn't have been able to do so because the blue whale is one of the swiftest whales. As we can see, a human being can pass relatively safely to a whale's stomach. But how can he survive in its stomach? And for how long? How could he breathe eat, drink, wouldn't the stomach digestive enzymes cause a human to die? This leads us to a brief study of the anatomy of the baleen whale's stomach. Scientists believe that the whale stomach has three major chambers and perhaps a fourth smaller chamber which may be an extension of the intestine. The first chamber in all whales is a dilatable sac-like extension of the esophagus with no digestive glands. The first stomach chamber secretes no digestive enzymes at all. As I explained earlier, whales swallow large quantity of krill and plankton and shrimp alive without chewing or biting its brie. So in that chamber, the food simply is left to die and decompose. It is interesting to know that in the flesh of the fish and other marine life is an enzyme called cathepsin which breaks down the brie once it has died, after the whale's catch has liquefied itself, it passes through a small hole into the whale's second chamber 
of the stomach. So there was neither chewing or biting process nor digestive enzymes to harm Prophet Yunus body when he arrived at the first chamber in the whale's stomach. It is believed that the human being can survive about three days without water and even longer without food. Some scholars believe that Prophet Yunus والسلام, stayed in the whale's stomach for a day, while others argue that he stayed there for three days. Yet others predict that he stayed there for seven days. But how could he have breathed? Were there any source of oxygen in the first chamber of the blue whale stomach? You are listening to Hidden Jewels of the Quran. As mentioned earlier, the baleen whale feeds on krill, shrimp, and plankton. Krill and shrimp cannot be a source of oxygen, but how about the plankton? Plankton is microscopic organisms floating freely upon oceanic currents and in other bodies of water. Plankton is made up of tiny plants called phytoplankton and tiny organisms, animals called zooplankton. The phytoplankton use chlorophyll in the process of photosynthesizing to absorb light and carbon dioxide and other chemicals and release oxygen. Inside the whale stomach, these tiny plants were essential for Prophet Yunus survival. As the whale swallowed tons of plankton without chewing, it reached the first chamber of the whale's stomach alive. Then, through the continuation of the process of photosynthesizing, it continues to absorb carbon dioxide and light to release oxygen for Prophet Yunus to breathe. Photosynthesizing consists of two stages, a series of light-dependent reactions which are temperature-independent and a series of temperature-dependent reactions which are light-independent. The rate of the first series, called the light reaction, can be increased by increasing light intensity. In the second series, called the dark reaction, the rate can be increased by increasing temperature. The temperature inside the whale is high, yet bearable to the human being's body. At about 104 Fahrenheit, to 108 Fahrenheit, which will cause an increase in the dark reaction of the photosynthesizing process. In addition, a deeper metaphorical look can reveal to us a source of light that allowed the light-dependent photosynthesizing process to happen. The story informs us that angels 
appeared to Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam inside the whale, and the angels are made of light, according to the hadith of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, where the angels and the source of light that kept photosynthesizing process in action. To investigate this possibility, we have to try further to understand the nature of angels from a scientific perspective. Visible light is just a small part of a phenomena called the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic radiation includes X-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays and may be raised beyond our knowledge. Angels are said to be created of these photons or electromagnetic radiation, an invisible part of such a spectrum. They are described as having wings, but these wings are not to be misunderstood with those of birds made from feathers. Having wings should simply imply that they have the ability to vibrate. Vibration means a changing of frequency. Angels can change their frequencies and the wavelengths with which they travel. Angels could have penetrated through the whale's body in the same way that X-rays and laser rays penetrate through our bodies. They could have changed their frequencies to the visible light range, which allowed the plankton to continue their photosynthesizing process, releasing oxygen to profit units to breathe. Without prayer, there wouldn't have been any source of light because the angels would not have come to allow the photosynthesizing process to continue. And Prophet Yunus alayhi salam would have died, his body would have been liquefied and passed through to the second chamber to be digested and absorbed by the whale's body and mixed with its blood and cells until the day of resurrection, as Allah says in Surah 38, Ayat 143 and 144, had he not been one of those who praised and glorified Allah, he would have stayed in the whale's belly until the day of resurrection. Because Prophet Yunus والسلام, continued to pray inside the whale's stomach, Allah kept sending the angels, and so he kept him alive, and his body became indigestible substance to the whale. In fact, angels could have also kept the krill alive, and so they too became indigestible to the whale, who had to eventually throw up, as Allah says in 38, 145, then we threw him into the wilderness and he was sick. Of course, it was not the best condition in which a human being can live, but it was enough for survival. When Prophet Yunus alayhi salam was thrown out to the land, he was severely ill. Probably he suffered dehydration, being exposed to salty water for quite some time. And probably he suffered some skin inflammation or some cuts from the krill and the shrimp clothes. But Allah sent for him the best cure. As Allah says in 38.146, And we made a gourd tree grow over him. Scholars suggested that the tree of Yaqteen in Arabic language 
could be referring to winter squash, watermelon, or pumpkin. They all belong to the gourd family. Notice that the ayah says the tree grew over him. Shouldn't the ayah have said that the tree grew beside him? Do trees grow over things or over people? This should lead us to examine the growth of gourd trees. You are listening to Hidden Jewels of the Quran. Gourds is a common name for a family of plants consisting of rapid growing vines with bound lobed leaves. Helically twisted tendrils. The plants grow long, non woody stems. Tendrils, slender projections arising from the stems, grasp nearby objects and coil around them in a process called tropism. Tropism is fixed, automatic, inherited movements in response to particular stimuli. Movements towards the source of stimulation is known as positive tropism. Movement away from the source is known as negative tropism. An individual organism may exhibit a positive or negative tropism to the same stimulus at different times, depending on the strength of the stimulation and the internal physiological condition of the organism. Charles Darwin in 1880 demonstrated the growing tips of plants bend towards a light source. This phenomenon is known as phototropism. The tendency of some plants to respond to touch or contact is known as thigmotropism. Some plants may climb and support themselves by entwinging their stems around plants or other objects. In the case of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, his brother have brought angels and such angels could have served as a source of light to provide the phototropism or it could have been sigmotropism by touching as he was laying down helpless and motionless beside the growing tree. We can see how the Quranic expression that the tree grew over Prophet Yunus is correct as the tree's vine coiled itself around his body when he was touching it, laying down so weak to move or resist it. In fact, he could have been in need of it as it provided a soothing and a curing substance for his skin. We were also told in a hadith that a goat used to pass by him to provide him with milk, and he could have started to eat from the fruits of the tree. 
So Allah sent for him both medicine to heal his skin and also food and drink so he could survive and gain back his strength and health. I have taken a scientific perspective to contemplate the story of Prophet Yunus والسلام, but science cannot provide us with a complete picture of the story. What is the spiritual lesson we can draw from Prophet Yunus' story? Metaphorically speaking, the darkness of the whale's stomach symbolizes our own darkness. When we give up and feel so helpless and powerless, if we remember to pray and to glorify and praise Allah, and to remember Allah, Allah will send us the help we need, for Allah has power over everything, and He is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, and He can deliver us out of any difficulty or hardship, and provide for us what we need. Thank you for listening. Please join me again in a new episode of the Hidden Jewels of the Holy Quran.